Hello everybody, welcome back to my workshop. So today, what I have for you is a little demonstration slash comparison, maybe some experiments. The company Yusu reached out to me and asked me if I'd like to try out their ABS-like resin. ABS-like resin is supposed to be a little bit stronger, a little bit more resilient than standard resin. So I figured today what I'll do is I will pit this Yusu iForm 182 ABS-like resin against some standard printing resin and we'll run some unscientific tests just to compare the ABS like resin to the standard resin and see how it fares in different categories like abrasion and um, shock resistance and overall strength. So if that interests you, stick around. First things first, I need to come up with some practical, real-world types of tests that can demonstrate how each resin performs in each category. For the abrasion test, I prepared some guitar pick files to print out. I selected both thin guitar picks and thick ones, just in case the thin ones don't last through the test. All files that I use in this video will be linked in the description box below. For the impact test, I'm going back to one of my favorite miniatures that I use for reviewing 3D printers, the Wood Elf Warrior by R. Gautier on Thingiverse. I will print this tiny model at 100% and 150% for two types of impact tests. Finally, I decided to design my own test models for the strength test. This test will be performed under tension, so I drew up some long, narrow cylinders in SketchUp placed them on a small raft, and prepared the STL file for printing. As I mentioned before, the main focus of this video is the Yusu iForm ABS-like resin. This particular flavor is called Red Wax, and it has a nice flesh tone to it. It will be pitted against a standard black resin. I covered the name here because the brand of resin isn't as important as the comparison of average, readily available standard resin versus this ABS-like resin. Test number one, abrasion resistance. For both resins, the files printed out perfectly. Cleanup also was a similar experience, with neither being easier or harder to clean and cure than the other. The test is simple. I'm going to play the same playlist on my bass guitar with picks made out of each resin. After playing with each type, I will assess if there's any damage or wear on the guitar picks. If I were a confident man, I would include the accompanying audio with this video. But I was playing through a computer on Rocksmith, and I can't share that audio for copyright purposes. The unamplified bass just sounds terrible on its own. Once I was finished playing, I was surprised to find that both guitar picks survived the session. Upon further inspection, so far as I could tell, both picks exhibited the same wear pattern, which, in all honesty, was just a small amount of scuffing on the leading edge of the pick. After evaluating all the available information, I would say that in this particular abrasion test, both resins performed equally with no clear winner. Test number two. Impact resistance. Once again, both resins printed flawlessly. Cleaning up and curing also was uneventful. I inspected each print to make sure all the tiny features and details were accounted for. For the first test, I placed the smaller miniatures in a common scenario, getting knocked off a table onto the hard floor. My children were more than eager to help me out, so I set up a slow motion camera and let my kids knock each model off the table and onto the floor. After one drop, the model printed with standard resin sustained some damage. The model printed with the ABS resin sure bounced a lot, but it did not sustain any noticeable damage. The larger models were dropped from a much higher location in the house. I would say the distance from the top of the stairs to the floor is somewhere around 10 feet. Once again, my children were eager to help, so 
While they pushed the models off the handrail, I was downstairs filming the impact. As you can see, both models sustained damage in the fall, but I would say that the damage to the standard resin model is much more complete and catastrophic than the model printed in the ABS resin. I think I can definitively say that in this impact test, the round is won by the ABS-like resin. Can we take a moment here and appreciate how awesome my VoxLab Proxima printer is? Not only did it print these models flawlessly on the first try with standard profiles, but the detail is incredible also. The price is also incredible, and it currently has the lowest cost of entry for any 2K mono resin printer out there. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check it out for yourself. Test number three, tension slash strength test. Once again, my test cylinders printed out great and cleanup and curing was a breeze. I had to clip the individual cylinders away from the raft before I could use them. The setup for this test is sketchy at best. I first clamp the test cylinder into my vise, then I attach a C-clamp to the opposite end. Using a luggage scale, I pull down on the C-clamp until the test cylinder fails. I review the footage to see at what force the failure took place. First up, standard resin. Sample 1 failed at 19 pounds. Sample 2 also failed at 19 pounds. Starting to see a pattern here as sample 3 also fails at 19 pounds. Sample 4 failed at 23 pounds. The average strength for the standard resin after testing is 20 pounds. Let's see how the ABS-like resin performs in the same test. Sample 1 failed at 27 pounds. Sample 2 failed at 29 pounds. Sample 3 failed at 27 pounds. Sample 4 failed at 28 pounds. The average strength of the ABS resin after testing is 28 pounds. That is a 38% increase in strength over the standard resin. ABS resin takes this round. So to summarize once again, it looks like in the abrasion test, both resins um, fared about equally as well, which was a surprise. I was expecting the standard resin to experience maybe some chipping or some type of damage plucking those bass guitar strings. In the impact test, you could tell that even though there were, both models sustained some damage, there was a lot less damage on the ABS-like resin models. And then in the overall strength test, you could see that the ABS resin outperformed the standard resin by a pretty significant margin. The reason I came up with this idea to test these two resins against each other is because I have printed several miniatures with standard resin over here. And just simply just, you know, knocking them off of maybe a like a 12 inch shelf or something onto a, the countertop, a lot of the fine details on these prints would um, just break off. And it was kind of frustrating because Especially if you go through all the trouble of painting your model and getting all that intricate detail in there only to have it ruined by knocking it off of a tabletop or, or whatever the case may be. The chances of that happening are a little bit slimmer if you use your ABS-like resin. And on top of all of the benefits that the ABS resin brings you, it also prints exactly as well as a standard resin. So... I really don't see why in today's market you would choose a standard resin over an ABS-like resin because they cost pretty much the same. And if you get the same performance as far as detail and fidelity in your prints and higher performance in the durability of the prints, it's kind of a no-brainer for me. So anyway, I want to... Uh, Give a big thanks to Yusu for sharing this resin with me and giving me a chance to try it out. And I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like these types of videos, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. 
If you also want to help out the channel, you might want to think about clicking that like button or leaving a comment down below because those types of things really help out and they don't cost you anything. So once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.